So with the latest D23 this year, we got some more news when it comes to Captain America New World Order, also known as Captain America 4, and we're going to be seeing the return of Sam Wilson as Captain America. He's also going to be passing down the role of Falcon to someone else, along with the return of the leader from the Incredible Hulk movie. So this movie seems to have a lot of stuff going on, and I'm actually quite looking forward to it. But with that being said, I wanted to take a look at something pertaining to the MCU and Captain America and that is the Marvel Legends 2-pack for Captain America Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson, and we're going to be talking about it all here on The Geek Effect. So here we are with the Marvel Legends Captain America 2 pack featuring Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers and I'm really looking forward to getting these two out of the packaging but starting with the packaging we can see all the details and everything of it starting with that Legend series logo at the top we also have that emblem that we're used to seeing with a lot of Marvel Legends stuff at the top as well so it has the Captain America shield there and then you have the logos and stuff for the respective characters so the Falcon and the Winter Soldier logo along with that Disney Plus branding and then the text that says Captain America Sam Wilson and on the right side of that we have the Avengers Endgame logo along with the text that says Captain America Steve Rogers you have the Hasbro logo and stuff down there with some warnings age recommendations all that stuff like that and then when you flip this over to the left side, you have that character artwork for Captain America Sam Wilson. And then when you flip this over to the right side, you also have Steve Rogers Captain America. And then when you flip it around to the back, you also have that exact same artwork along with some read-ups on the characters. So for Sam Wilson, it says Captain America Sam Wilson wielding the shield and new wings from Wakanda. Sam Wilson takes up the mantle of Captain America to bring hope to an uncertain world. And then for Steve Rogers, it says Captain America Steve Rogers Shaken by the events of Infinity War, Steve Rogers takes up the shield and mantle of Captain America once more to face Thanos. And this is something that I always like reading on screen. I'm not sure how you guys feel about it or whatever, but I like to read it in full. And plus, it just adds that extra sort of, uh, I guess, feel for me when seeing this on the packaging. So I'm kind of bummed that we're not going to be seeing that as much when it comes to at least the typical Marvel Legends packagings now that have the windowless uh, sort of look and everything to them. That just kind of like to showcase what the accessories are, that sort of thing. So I'm going to kind of miss that. One last thing I want to make mention of before unboxing these figures is that they're slightly updated from the versions that we've gotten before. So when it comes to Sam Wilson cap, his suit is basically the same one we got with that initial Disney Plus wave. Just has some slight changes to it with the added details to his pants and stuff like in terms of paint. And then he also has that additional head sculpt for Anthony Mackie without the goggles. So I do like that they included that. There's just no wings with this figure. So if you need wings for your Falcon... Hopefully you can get those Build-A-Figure pieces and use that with this, which that will just complete the look even more. When it comes to Steve Rogers' Captain America, he does have that same body and everything from the worthy Captain America figure from Marvel Legends, but his head sculpt that does not have the helmet on is slightly changed and modified to look a bit better than the one that we got initially with Worthy Cap. He also does not have that, you know, beaten up shield or anything like that. It's nice and clean, and he does not come with Mjolnir, so if you want those types of looks for this Captain America, you'll have to get those other accessories, maybe loose or something like that to complete that look if that's what you're looking to do. But let's go ahead and get these figures out of the box. Here we are with both Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers Captain America out of the packaging and to start things off I really do love a lot of the details on each of these figures and I'm looking forward to giving you guys a close look at them. I do think that Hasbro definitely nailed the accuracy of each of these characters pretty well when you compare them to their on-screen appearances with Sam Wilson from Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Steve Rogers from Avengers Endgame. As I mentioned earlier, these are some slightly updated figures from what we got at single releases back when they started with Disney Plus and also with the Avengers Endgame figure releases. So you will see some slight changes here and there. And I like that they wanted to make those improvements here and there because it shows that initiative to always keep improving. And also, you know, just not basically have a two pack where they're the exact same figure, but just bundled together. I do like that. In addition to that, they also come with some pretty cool accessories too, which we'll take a look at later. There were some things I would have liked to see a bit more when it comes to those accessories, which I'll touch on. 
But with that being said, let's go ahead and get a closer look at each of these figures. Right off the bat, we're going to be taking a look at Sam Wilson, Captain America. And this figure, like I said before, looks good. I like a lot of the details to it. And I think that they were able to keep things pretty accurate. The head sculpt does have everything that you see in the show. You've got those goggles there with the transparent red glass to it. So you can kind of see the eyes underneath that, which is nice. You even have all the extra details from the mask and those added paint details to it. So a bit of sculpting going at the end of it as well which is pretty good. The hair, I do like how that looks. It looks accurate. The only thing is that it kind of has like a slanted sort of look to it at the top. Like, I don't know how well you guys can tell, but it kind of starts up pretty high on this end and then tilts down that way. And I don't know if that's how Anthony Mackie's hair looks, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it's more even looking at the front, but I could be wrong. But the rest of the sculpting with this is pretty solid. I do like all the facial expressions and everything that they have going on here with this particular head sculpt it gives off a very serious sort of look to Captain America Sam Wilson. Moving down towards the rest of the details when it comes to Sam Wilson's suit, I think that they're pretty accurate. You can see all those nice colors are very vivid on this outfit and you have like the nice bright reds, the dark blues right there, and even those silver details that we see with his star on the sides of the star and also on the shoulders right there and also right there. Everything is pretty clean when it comes to this whole outfit. Moving over to the arms and everything, you can see some more added details that give this very Captain America uh, shield like look to it or American flag look to it obviously based on the suit. And I like a lot of it. You have those very small details there even with that star and silver against that blue circle. And you even have some more of those extra details of the suit going all the way down to the arm. This one does have that silver detailing for like the padding or like the wrist guard sort of thing that's on his wrist as well. And then moving down towards the end of his hand, you even have some more of those silver details along with the red and stuff. And like I said, all of this does look pretty clean in my opinion. And same details go for the other arm as well. Moving to the back, there isn't much to really talk about there, but you do have the finishings of the suit, more in blue and then like some in white, and you have some more of the white details on this side and that side, and also kind of continuing down towards the waist area, but that does get covered up with the belt buckle that he has there with the blue and then the silver details to it. Same thing at the front as well. The rest of the figure does have all the details there and it's got some good sculpting too. You can see those fabric sort of details on the sides of his leg, which I think turned out pretty well. And you can see that on this side as well. More paint details being added there with the white and of course all those silver details and everything with the boot and stuff like that. Some of the red, everything just looks clean and very smooth in my opinion. I'm not noticing any like QC issues when it comes to the paint applications on this figure, at least for the most part, everything looks pretty neat. As I mentioned before, this is basically just reusing the same body mold and figure that we got with that single release for Sam Wilson cap when they started with the Disney Plus stuff, but he does have some slight updates, which we'll see here on the thighs right there where they added that gray paint there for like the sort of, I guess, pocket area maybe, or maybe it's just another detail that's on his suit. So you'll see that there and you'll also see some of that same dark gray paint there at the knee area. So those are just the added details that they did make for this figure. I don't think there's anything else, at least not that I'm noticing. If you guys do know what some of the other details were, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. But I think those were just the main changes that they made to this figure just to update it a little bit. But taking a look at the feet and everything like that, I do like the sculpting of this. It has a very rough feel to it. You can see all those buckles and everything for his boots. And they look pretty clean. You can see all the other details at the bottom of the feet as well. Same thing with this one. Very clean looking figure. Next up, we have Steve Rogers, Captain America in his Endgame suit. And this figure looks pretty good too, in my opinion. I think that they definitely nailed a lot of the details pretty well. Like when you look at the head sculpt, you can see all those details up close and they look solid. I wouldn't say that it looks exactly like Chris Evans when he has that helmet on. I would say it is a bit lacking in that department, but... All the other details on this, like the helmet looks solid, the sculpting and everything overall, I mean, it's pretty good when it comes to like the facial features, the ears, the chin strap. You can see the silver paint on the letter A there. You have that on the wings as well, on both the left and the right side of the helmet and a bit of texture to the helmet as well, especially when you look at it at the back, you can see some more detail there. When it comes to the torso area of this figure, I definitely think that they nailed a lot of the details, especially with that scale mail pattern that we saw in Avengers Endgame, which by the way, I love the fact that they wanted to do that look for Captain America's suit, especially for Chris Evans' last 
portrayal of the character and just like the last time we would see this version of Captain America on screen it was great to see that because prior to that they never really used the scale mill pattern on any of the suits from what I can remember I think it's always had more of a smooth look to it with like padding and stitching and stuff that you could see kind of creating different shapes on the outfit but never the scale mill pattern that is more prominent like in the comic books and everything like that you do have the silver star in the center as well which has some pretty good sculpting you have the strap details and everything on both the left and right side of the figure in that faded brown color along with the silver paint applications for like the buckles and everything right there. You can see some more of that on the right side as well. And then if you look at the shoulder, you'll see more of that scale mail pattern, the Avengers A there on the right side as it should be in that silver color along with the dark red circle. And then moving down, you have some more sculpting and everything, which looks pretty good. A bit of gathering and like wrinkles there on his suit near the bicep and then some more details going down the forearm and same thing applies to the other arm as well the hand here on this figure does look pretty good too you can see the sculpting has a bit of like the veins I guess kind of like on this area at least I think that's what that's meant to be but you have the opened up parts of the glove in that nice brown color and the sculpting of the fist looks pretty good too if you look at the other hand you'll see those same details as I mentioned before but then the hand right here is opened up a bit. This is because they reused the Worthy Cap figure that came with Mjolnir. So if you had Mjolnir, you could put that here in this figure. I don't. So I plan to get that at some point to complete this look even more and add to that. But the sculpting on this does look pretty solid. And then if you look at the back of the figure, you'll see some other details like the rest of the straps along with the silver uh, area where you would kind of attach the shield. You can't do that with this figure, unfortunately, which I'll touch on in a bit. But that's there. You also have some more details for the suit, all that pattern and stuff, which looks pretty clean. And then you have the details and everything of the belt starting at the back with the faded brown color and the reddish brown sort of color underneath that. Pockets on the right and left side of the figure as well. And then the silver buckle in the center. And then you also have the nice white color. It's not like a very bright white. It's like a sort of faded, dingy looking white color that they have going on here along with the dark red as well. And it looks pretty good. You can see those details and everything that are there. Moving down towards the rest of the figure, we get a look at the legs and all the detailing that is there. You have some pockets on both the left and right side of the figure. They look pretty good. I like the sculpting on that. And the entirety of like the pants have this very baggy look to it that we see in the movie. And they translated that very well with all the wrinkles and like gathering and stuff that we see at the end of the thigh, kind of going towards the calf near the boot area. You can see some more of that. Even at like the groin area, you can see that as well. Same thing kind of at the back. So I like that they were able to capture that baggy sort of look to his outfit in certain areas. Plus you have some other details like the dark red patterns that are on the side of his thigh on both the right and the left side as well. When it comes to the slight updates to this figure in comparison to the Worthy Cap figure that was originally released, they did add some more dark red detailing right there at the top of the thigh and same thing on this right leg as well. And then there's also like the silver detailings but I didn't touch on that but there's like some silver details that they added right there at the side of his waist and like hip area so those are just like some of the changes that they did make to this figure but overall everything looks pretty solid it has some nice rough texture to it to get that sort of I guess uh leathery or like rough feel to his suit the boots and everything did turn out pretty well too you can see the straps going all around same thing on this leg and all the texture and everything at the foot of the boot some more straps and everything and same thing with the bottom of it. You can see like the sort of uh, grooves and everything at the bottom of that boot and then the smooth texture as well. Like nothing really to complain about there. I definitely think that in terms of detail and sculpting, everything turned out pretty well. So with figures like this, you're going to want some accessories to go with them, of course, and something that really does complement each of the figures. And I think that Hasbro was really able to do that, but I do think that things are a bit lacking more so on Steve Rogers' part. Sam Wilson pretty much has everything that I would expect to see with him minus his wings. For Sam, we do get his shield that we saw in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and this is a very accurate depiction of that shield. You can see the nice, bright, and vivid colors to it with the red and the blue. You have those notches at the five points of the star on that silver ring of the shield, and you even have the etching and like engraving there for the star as well, which I think that that turned out pretty nice. And then when you flip that over, you have the leather straps there too, the flat silver color that you see underneath. And you could easily put this on his arm by just popping the hand out, sliding it onto the forearm, and then popping the hand back in. Then you're good to go. You can create some nice poses with this thing, have fun with it. And of course, you could always use it without having it on the arm. Just 
do things as you please and just create some different ways to display your Sam Wilson figure. Sam also does come with an additional head sculpt, which does have him without the goggles and the mask and everything. This does look pretty clean. I think that it matches the look of Anthony Mackie in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But at times when I'm looking at it, I can't really put my finger on what it is, but it just looks a bit off, like in terms of the resemblance. But other than that, I do like all the sculpted details on it, like the ears, the nose, the mouth and everything. Everything's pretty much the same that we saw on the one with the mask already on. And of course, you can just pop this on to the body, swap things out, and just alternate between to create different looks for your Sam Wilson figure. Sam also comes with fisted hands for his figure, and these do look pretty good too. I like the sculpting on them. You have the red part of the glove, you got that silver there, along with the finger sticking out of the glove in that fisted position, and these are pretty solid. You can easily swap these in and out with the hands that are already on the figure and create different looks. The hands that the figure already comes with on them are pretty good too in that opened up look, so I do like how those turned out. But I would have loved to see maybe some extra gripping hands for this figure. Like if you wanted to have him throwing the shield from the end of it or like the tip of it, that would have been great to see here. But other than that, things are pretty good with these hands. Then the final accessory that we get with Sam Wilson is the jetpack that houses the wings for his suit. And this is a very basic piece, not really a whole lot to write home about. It's in that flat silver sort of color. You have the blue paint apps to it on the left and right side and some pretty good sculpting. And then you have the peg on the back of it where you can peg that onto the back of his suit. It's very simple how that's done. There's a peg hole on the back right there. And then that just clips in just like so. And it has a very firm grip. And then that just kind of completes the look to Sam Wilson when he has the jetpack on. Steve Rogers' shield is pretty good too. He does have that dark blue circle rather than that bright vivid blue to his shield just because that's the way it was in Avengers Endgame. It's very solid and then when you flip that over you also have the same leather straps just in that faded brown color rather than that reddish brown color that we saw on Sam Wilson's shield. And of course you can do the exact same method for getting the shield on his arm and then of course if you want to mess around with it off the arm you can do the same thing too. As for the head sculpt that he comes with, I love this and I definitely think that it nails the look of Steve Rogers with excellence. This is definitely the one that I want to have him, you know, wearing the most, especially when having him on display or using him in photos. Like this looks pretty solid. You can see all the details in that hair sculpt with like the lines and the waves and stuff with the individual detailings and sculpting. Looks very solid in my opinion. All the details of the facial features look pretty accurate to Chris Evans. As I mentioned briefly, I do think that Steve Rogers figure is a bit lacking when it comes to the accessories and it's really just when it comes to the hands because I mean he has everything there that I would like to see with this figure minus the Mjolnir. I just think that if they gave him like maybe two more hands like how they did with Sam Wilson that really would have made things a bit better especially since he only has the gripping hand on the left and then one fisted hand. Just give him one more fisted hand to complete the whole fisted look to Captain America with like punching and stuff and then I don't know maybe again like a gripping hand to like throw the shield from the tip of it rather than just having it on the arm or somewhat being able to hold it like I think that would have really made things even better for this figure but other than that the accessories are pretty good and I like what you're able to do with them. The articulation for both of the figures are pretty good and kind of what I expected to see on both Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers just with how their suits are and any sort of limitations that they may have and they all work pretty well. So starting with Sam Wilson we do have rotation in the head 360 degrees of course along with being able to tilt to the side both the left and the right and it's got some good range of motion there. I do like how that looks. When you look at it from the side you can see just how far it tilts down and then just how far it tilts upward. And that's going to be good for like flight poses when you're messing around with the ab crunch, trying to angle it around and stuff just to get those looks of him like flying forward or downward or anything like that. It's kind of difficult to sort of sell the look of that when you don't have the wings. But like I said, that is definitely going to be a goal of mine to get the wings for this guy to really complete the look of this figure. When you're looking at the arms, you do have rotation 360 degrees in that shoulder in both arms you can also raise the arms up as high as this it does stop a bit because of that padding sort of sculpt in the shoulder same thing going on for the other arm so it is a bit restricted in raising it up any further but it is pretty much what i expected to see there there is swivel in the bicep as well and you also have those double jointed elbows too so you can kind of get those in as far as that and get some nice punching poses same thing with the other arm there's also swivel in the wrist just as you would expect, plus being able to angle it down as far as that and then back up as far as that. 
He also has some ab crunch as well, being able to angle it down as far as that and then angle it back as far as that, which, like I said, does help with trying to get some flight poses for him. And that is a lot of fun to mess around with. Then you can also rotate him 360 degrees in the waist and kick the legs up as high as that. Same thing for the other leg. And then it stops right there when you're trying to push it back. And that's where it stops. And then, of course, you can also kick them up to the side as far as that. But if you're trying to get some sort of split pose, you can kind of do it kind of like that. If you wanted to do something like that, which is cool. There's the swivel in the thigh for both legs, double jointed knees, of course. And then you also have the ankle rockers for the feet. So you can get those from side to side. Also angle it back as far as that and then angle it in as far as that. Same thing goes on for the other leg. As for Steve Rogers articulation, it's pretty much along the lines of what we get with Sam Wilson. You can rotate the head 360 degrees, of course, with being able to tilt the head down as far as that, and same thing going back. He actually is on that hinge joint rather than the dumbbell joint that we see with Sam Wilson, so it's not as smooth of like a movement in terms of tilting and stuff like that, and you really can't tilt things too much to the left or right for this head, which is, I guess, all right. Like, I guess it's not necessary to have that there. When you look at the arms, you can rotate them 360 degrees in the shoulder, raise them up as far as that. You kind of have to be careful though with this because the shoulder pad piece with the scale mail is in a soft plastic. So you kind of have to like rotate this a bit and then let it go over the shoulder just because of it like getting stopped. This way you can get that extra range of motion. Just don't raise it up too much because I'm afraid that you might end up popping this off or something like that or like tearing it off if it's like molded to it. So just be a bit cautious with that. But it does have rotation there. Rotation in the bicep, of course, in both arms, double jointed elbows to get that extra range of motion. And then the swivel in the wrist to rotate 360 degrees tilted down like that and then tilt it up like that as well and then same thing goes on for the other wrist as well and that hand and all that range of motion there the ab crunch is also pretty good you can get him to tilt in as far as that and then angle him back as far as that so there's no complaints there it's basically the exact same thing that we're seeing on the sam wilson figure and then you can also rotate him at the waist 360 degrees along with being able to kick the legs up as high as that, it kind of gets obstructed because of the belt. So you're missing that extra little raising right there, but it's not that big of a deal. Same thing goes on with the other leg. And then you can kick them back about right there. That's kind of where it stops before you start kind of going into the sideways kicking sort of territory where he splits like that. Same as Sam Wilson. And of course, if you wanted him to kind of do some splits, you could kind of get it. It's not as much as uh, Sam Wilson just because... Cap's thighs are a bit bigger, and we also know why that is. If you guys have seen She-Hulk and also understand the whole thing going on with Captain America ever since Endgame. But that is the sort of range of motion that we're getting there with the thighs and everything in that lower area. And then you also have the double-jointed knees as well for that extra range of motion, which is pretty good. And then you also have swivel at the boot cut, which is nice too. So you can rotate the boots, and there's the angle rockers, which go from side to side. The joints for the feet are very clicky when you're angling them inward and backward, so you will have a lot of that clicking sound, but they do have that motion there too. And again, you can just have some fun with both of these figures, create all sorts of poses and action sequences with both of them in action, or you know, just having them in sequences according to like what happened in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or what happened in Avengers Endgame, just... Have a bunch of fun. So I'm looking forward to doing that with these figures and taking photos and everything with them. As always, I do like to give you guys a size comparison with these figures that we're reviewing in regards to other Marvel Legends figures and just figures in general in my collection. And so starting things off, I do have the Marvel Legends Deadpool from Deadpool 2 side by side with Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson. You can see that they're both the exact same height pretty much. And you can see that even more when you look at them from the side profile, of course. You can see that when you look at it from the back profile and also from the side once again. And these look pretty good. I definitely do like how they look side by side with one another. Next up, we have the Spider-Man black and gold suit from Spider-Man No Way Home, and we can see how this scales up next to Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson. Of course, he's a bit on the shorter side just because of the age of Peter Parker in the MCU and just his whole height difference and everything like that, keeping within that young adult sort of look. And it looks pretty good. You can see how that looks from the front. You can, of course, see that from 
the side view, you can see that from the back view, and you can also see that from the side view once more. Then for our final figure, we have Shang-Chi from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and we can see how he looks side by side with Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson. I think they look pretty good, and you can see that they're on par with each other's height, so there's not much of a height difference going on here, but you can see how that looks front-facing. You can see how that looks from the side view. You can also see how that looks from behind as well, and then of course from the side once more. In the end, I love how both of these figures turned out, and I think that the Marvel Legends team did a very good job creating these characters in Marvel Legends form. All the details look very solid, and even with the slight, you know, updates to it with, you know, some paint apps and stuff here on Sam Wilson's suit, a little bit on Steve Rogers' suit, it looks good overall. Once again, I will say, though, when it comes to Steve Rogers, I would have loved to see a little bit more when it comes to accessories. Maybe one more fisted hand to go with the fisted hand that's already on the figure, or maybe throw in Mjolnir with this figure just to kind of help add a bit more play factor to him rather than just having the shield. I think that definitely would have improved things a bit, especially seeing how Falcon did come with fisted hands for him to kind of swap out with the hands that are already on this figure. So that does kind of leave me a bit more wanting when it comes to Steve Rogers, but his head sculpt looks phenomenal. I think that it's definitely a major improvement in comparison to the one that originally came with Worthy Cap. I don't think a lot of people will need to pick this pack up, mainly because it's only some slight improvements being made to these figures. Like if you already have those single releases, there definitely isn't like any need to immediately go and get these unless you're just looking to have a slightly better version you know in the best version out there of these marvel legends characters then that's about it but other than that you definitely could be content with that and if you want to make some slight changes just find the head sculpt loose for steve rogers or get that head sculpt loose for anthony mackie add it to the figure you already have in your collection and you're good to go i do hope you all enjoyed this review though and if you guys did be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you guys are interested in seeing more reviews in the future i actually do have another review planned at some point which will be for the usagi yojimbo which i was able to pick that up recently so i'm looking forward to getting that guy on box and checking him out with you guys but with that being said i hope you all have an amazing day and i'll catch you all later peace out